Hello guys, welcome to Hatchsput Economics. Hatchsput Soot. <laughs> it's your girl Connie. And if you haven't done so, you guys know if you heard me what I'm about to say, please like and subscribe. Hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell to get all my notifications. So welcome back guys. Thank you so much for coming back to my YouTube. And you know, I've been talking about this topic for quite some time. I haven't gotten the attention I think it should have gotten, but I think we're all going to listen now. We are all going to be full alert. So I talked about healthcare discrimination of being one of the most discussed, least discussed discrimination in the United States where black women, despite their economic or socioeconomic standing, despite their education, despite how wealthy they are, they are equal victims of healthcare discrimination. That covers misdiagnosing, misdiagnosing us, ignoring our symptoms, um, just not giving us adequate care. And it's a discriminatory problem. And most black women are unaware of it. I went through it because I was diagnosed with PCOS and endometriosis, and it took me forever to get those diagnoses, even longer than other women that say, hey, it takes long anyway, took me much longer. And I was a case I was a perfect casebook study, meaning that I had every single symptom imaginable and I still was ignored. I literally had to uh, diagnose myself and go to a lab and do my own lab work. It was crazy. But um, this is what I want to talk about. So it's really important. If you see this video, please spread it. Talk it, talk to it uh, with your daughters, with your, your aunts, your cousins. This is a serious issue. African-American women are dying disproportionately on all metrics. Not just Serena, but you have African-American women that are dying in all the eight major diseases and stuff like that because we aren't getting the same care. And again, I want to stress, even if you got a master's, even if you are rich, it doesn't matter. You still are a victim of healthcare discrimination. So we're going to go through this together. So this is from Vox, and it talks about Serena's experience. We all know Serena just had a baby. Congratulations to her and her husband. But this is a scary side. What Serena Williams' scary childbirth story says about medical treatment of black women? Black women are often dismissed or ignored by medical care providers. Williams wasn't an exception. So I'm sure you guys know about Serena Williams. She's probably the most dominant athlete in the history of mankind. And she is famous and she just got married. So just think about this for a second. If someone like Serena Williams, all right, is not getting the proper medical care with all the wealth, money, and fame, what happens to uh, regular women of color like me, regular women of color like you, regular women of color? So we're just going to read this right now. A new Vogue profile, Serena, sheds light not only on the health risks that can come with childbirth, but also how those factors, coupled with racial bias in the medical field, can have dangerous, even life-threatening results for Black women. In Vogue's February cover story, Williams recalls dealing with serious complications shortly after the recent birth of her daughter, Alexis Olympia. That's a cool name. Williams explains that the problem started the day after her daughter's birth by cesarean section when Williams felt short of breath. Due to her history of pulmonary embolisms, Williams underwent emergency treatment for a life-threatening embolism in 2011. The tennis star quickly alerted the nurse about her symptoms, but the response wasn't what she expected. So she alerted the nurse. She did her part and said, hey, 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 I have a certain condition. And look what happened. But the response wasn't what she expected. Vogue writer Rob Haskell explains. She walked out of the hospital room so her mother wouldn't worry and told the nearest nurse between gas that she needed a CT scan with contrast and an IV herprin, a blood thinner, right away. The nurse thought her pain medicine might be making her confused. But Serena insisted and soon enough a doctor was performing an ultrasound of her leg. I was like a Doppler. I told you I need a CT scan and a herparin drip. She remembers telling the team. The ultrasound revealed nothing, so they sent her for the CT, and sure enough, she had several small clots, had several small blood clots had settled in her lungs. Minutes later, she was on the drip. I was like, listen to Dr. Williams. So she's Serena Williams, so she's calling herself Dr. Williams. That is an embarrassment. Williams added that she continued to have problems after the scare. Williams coughed frequently due to the embolisms, and the costs were forceful enough to cause her C-section wound to rupture. When she went in for surgery, doctors found that she had a hematoma, had filled her abdomen, a result of blood thinners. 
A filter was placed into one of her major veins to keep blood clots from traveling to her lungs. When she finally returned home, Williams needed six weeks of bed rest. Poor thing. Williams' harrowing account places her among 50,000, an estimate researchers says can actually be on the low end. So that 50,000 estimate is on the low end in America who deal with dangerous or life-threatening pregnancy complications each year. Black women are disproportionately likely to face these complications, and they are also likely to fall victim to America's ongoing return, maternal mortality rate, sorry, maternal mortality crisis, being three to four times more likely than white women to die from pregnancy-related complications. All right? So this is crazy. Um, right down here, ProPublica Pro and NPR which are collaborating on an in-depth maternal morality reporting project, note that many of these debts are largely preventable. But due to the impacts of systematic racism and discrimination, including the care provided by the medical system, black women remain more likely than any other group to die from their pregnancies. As many black women on Twitter have noted, Serena Williams' story just, just shows just how hard it can be for black women at all levels of society, including elite athletes known the world over to get the care they need. All right. So it's, 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 it's scary. All right. And I'm, I'm going to continue down here. The U.S. has failed to deal with its high rates of maternal morality on many fronts, particularly for black women. So just, I'm just going to pause it there. The only reason the United States of America has a high uh, morality rate for women that die in labor and die after child labor is because of black women. Black women are the number one demographic. So it's disproportionately, and we, if it, if you took black women, right, if you took black women out of the, out of the agenda or out of the, um, the, the statistics, they wouldn't even be a blip in terms of morality rate. So this is what I mean when I talk about feminism, when I talk about rights for black women, like how can this be happening? How can this, how can it be this bad, this tragic, and it gets no mainstream agenda? How can we be talking about women's rights, women's health rights? And yet this is the most intimate, the most special, the most sacred, the most holy. There is nothing more womanly than giving birth. It is the way humans come into the planet. Every single human you see came through a woman. So how can this not be an important topic, especially when it's happening at an astronomical rate and especially when it's targeting only African-American women? It's, it's, it's really shocking. OK, it's really shocking. The U.S. has failed to deal with its high rates of maternal morality on many fronts, particularly for black women. The U.S. has had the U.S. has very high maternal mortality rates compared to the rest of the developed world. Um, as Vox's Julia Belus has reported, overall maternal deaths have been on the rise in U.S., increasing by 27 percent. So 27 percent of all people who give birth in the U.S. die. That's what? That's to 24 deaths per 100,000 births between 2000 and 2014. Belus notes that this rate is more than three times the maternal death rate of the United Kingdom and about eight times the rate of Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden. That is crazy, right? In recent years, a growing number of maternal health-focused organizations and academics have dedicated more time and resources to better understand the crisis. I'm going to pause again. There's nothing to understand. It's discrimination and it's racism. And so this is what I mean. I don't want us to get to this fake kumbaya where we're like roses and greens. You know, this is reality. This can be your daughter. This can be your mom. This can be your sister. This is not something up for debate. Discrimination is real. Racism <laughs> is real. And it's the only way you can solve any issue on the planet is to acknowledge it, brainstorm, have a solution, and implement it. It's all about finding solutions. It's all about solving the problem. I am not making this video to harp on this and harp. I truly, with all the... 
every fiber of my being, I want to see a solution for this problem. And to me, it's about alerting doctors to their biases, educating doctors to prejudices so they can become aware, letting doctors know continuously, vigorously, if you are in this field, obstetrician, gynecology, or any type of field that touches any black woman, to have ongoing seminars, ongoing research to show you what's happening to black women. If you're in the medical field, this should be, this should be legally mandated. So that's what I want. I truly want solutions. I am not here to get anyone riled up because I know from experience, getting riled up doesn't do nothing. It feels good, but you don't solve anything. So um, there is still plenty that we don't understand, particularly when it comes to growing gap between the deaths of white the, uh, black mothers and their white peers. According to the CDC, from 2011 to 2013, black women have experienced roughly 43.5 deaths per 100,000 live births on an average compared to 12.7 deaths for white mothers. So it's not about, you know, Vox, I love you, but it, it's not that you don't understand Vox. It's that you are struggling to, to comprehend the massive amount of discrimination and racism and, and the way black women are treated on any socioeconomic level. First, they said obesity. Then they adjusted the numbers for obesity. First, they said poverty. Then they adjusted the numbers for poverty. So there's nothing else. So they're scratching their head like, hmm, what can it be? It's not what can it be. This is what it is. Like you, like you guys know, I'm all about the facts. I'm about the receipts. So if it's not about the facts and the receipts, I'm not going to bring it to you. If I ever do an opinion piece, you guys know I put the camera on my face. There's no documents. I talk and I let you know this is my opinion. So I'm just going to read it again. According to the CDC, from 2011, 2013, black women experienced roughly 43.5 deaths per 100,000 live births on average compared to 12.7 12, 12, 12 deaths for white mothers. That is an astronomical difference. Research has shown that a number of factors, including poor access to pre and postnatal care, chronic stress, the effects of racism, and the adequate medical treatment in the years preceding childbirth are likely to play a role in black women's likelihood to suffer life-threatening complications in the months surrounding their, their childbirth. So this is what, I don't know, I don't want to make this video too long, but this is what I talked about fertility diet. This is why I talked about you can't just want to have your body be fertile and healthy when you're about to give birth. You, I don't know if you guys are going to watch it, but I have another video called um, The Diet No One Talks About or Tells You About. So fertility is the pinnacle of female health. Even if you don't want to kid, have kids, even if you're done having kids, even if you hate kids, what you have to understand is fertility controls all your health systems, meaning your hair, your nails, your eyesight, your skin, your collagen, wrinkles, and most of all, weight, weight, weight. So once you're fertile, you're going to be equally healthy. If you're truly fertile, like 100% fertile, you're going to have a more potential to be a healthy human being and even statistically shown to live longer. But black women aren't given this information. I talk to organizations, oh, they're, you know, telling the women to be fertile is kind of uh, sexist. We're not talking about forcing you to be reproductive. We're talking about making you live, making you healthy. So you might want to check that video out. Um, the maternal morality disparity might appear to stem from the um, economic differences, but research has found that black women in higher economic brackets are still more likely than white women to die from pregnancy and childbirth related issues. And I find it funny that they keep harping on economic advantage. This is, what, this is what I want to ask you. When you go to the doctor, and you're, and whether you're on Medicaid or a PPO or an HMO, that doctor is getting paid regardless. So if you're seeing patients in the United States of America and you're a doctor, do you get a discount? Do you get a rebate? So that has nothing to do with it. If you are in a poor neighborhood and you're in a hospital, that hospital should not be operating less than a hospital on the Upper East Side. I, it, those doctors are still getting the same type of income. It should not be that way. So anyway, I also find it funny they're talking about economics when Serena is one of the richest athletes in the world. Like, it's Serena Williams, and she still received poor pay. So I do appreciate that they said here, you know, 
The, materially, the maternal morality disparity might appear to stem from economic differences, but research has found that black women in higher economic brackets are still more likely than white women. So the case in point, Serena Williams. A recent story from ProPublica's Annie Wildman illustrates why black women in cities like New York cannot simply educate or earn their way out of the crisis. So I'm a New Yorker. So I'm going to tell you that's absolutely true. I had to, I went to the best hospitals, Columbia, Presbyterian, Cornell, um, Roosevelt, Lenox, and I did not get adequate treatment. I had to turn into a doctor. Like Serena said, I became, um, you know, Dr. Williams. So even when accounting for risk factors like low educational attainment, obesity, and neighborhood poverty level, the city's black mothers still face significantly higher rates of harm, the agency found. Of note, black mothers who are college educated fear worse than women of all other races who never finish high school. That's worth reading one more time. All right. Of note, black mothers who are college educated fear worse than women of all races who never finished high school. Obese women of all races do better than black women who are of normal weight. Let's say it again. Obese women of all races do better than black women who are of normal weight. And black women in the wealthiest neighborhoods, okay? Let mercy. And black women in the wealthiest neighborhoods do worse than white, Hispanic, and Asian mothers in the poorest neighborhoods. So I'm gonna say it again. And black women, in the wealthiest neighborhoods do worse than white, Hispanic, and Asian mothers in the poorest neighborhoods. So I'm just going to highlight this bad boy, okay? Why are we talking about socioeconomics? Why are we talking about economics in terms of what affects black women? You just, you're, you are reading in front of your face that you can be a black woman in the wealthiest neighborhood, okay? And you can still do worse than whites and Hispanics and Asian mothers in the poorest neighborhoods. If that is not discrimination, if that is not racism, if that is not a, a derogatory issue with an entire demographic, I don't know what is. And we black women need to come to the terms that we have to take care of racism. We have to bring it to the political platforms. We have to cape for black women in our causes. You cannot continue to ignore this. I know some black women that they, they're so focused on other negative aspects. They're focused on who did this and who did that. This is real. Black women are dying. This can be your sister, your brother. And this is only one type of discrimination, meaning that this is, this is, um, black moms dying in childbirth. If you talk about breast cancer and diagnosis, ovarian cancer and diagnosis and diabetes, it is so depressing. I'm not even going to show. I'm not even going to go there. It's not even worth it. It's just depressing. So let me just finish up right here. The health department has even mapped where the most maternal harm occurs, dividing the city into community districts. The highest rates of complications are con concentrated in a swath of land in central Brooklyn, in an area largely untouched by the wave of gentrification that has swept other so swept over other parts of the borough. Here, mothers face up to four times the complication rates of neighborhoods just a few subway stops away. Okay, so literally, you have people living side by side four stops away and the people who are concentrated black women are getting less care than the non than the concentrated sorry the concentrated population of white women this is discrimination we can do better america can do better but we have to become aware we have to become and this is why i talk about black women needing our own brand of feminism that faces our challenges, that faces our concepts, that faces our culture, our expectations, what we need from society to, to live, it looks like, to live. In all, Black women are 243% more likely than white women to die from pregnancy 
or child related causes, producing one of the largest racial disparities in women's health. I'm going to read it one more time. In all, black women are 243% more likely than white women to die from pregnancy or childbirth related issues causes producing one of the largest racial disparities in women's health, according to ProPublica. That is crazy. I just did the sign of the cross. That is, that is, that is, I don't have a word. If you're still with me, God bless you, because I'm traumatized right along with you. That is astronomical. That is not me saying, oh, we need to get awareness. This is like 411, 911, emergency, 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 alert, alert, alert. This is crazy. This is a national tragedy. But we aren't doing the research that's needed and could hold hospitals accountable nationwide. Patricia Kahn's colors, a senior fellow studying maternal morality with the activist groups Mom Risking and co-founder of Black Lives Matter, told Vox, Black women don't receive the health care we deserve from the moment we are born. And our mothers don't, don't receive the health the health care they deserve. By the time we get pregnant and go have children, the absence of care that we should have received has not had an effect on our bodies or age beyond our years. Okay. Black women report having their concerns dismissed or ignored by the medical care providers. This happened to me. The American healthcare system has a long history of disparate treatment of black women whose health struggles have been systematically minimized or dismissed, funneling them into medical facilities that are less equipped to handle their pregnancies. As journalists Nina Martin and Renee Mortgage explained, in a story on black maternal morality in December, black women still report facing bias when receiving pregnancy-related care. The feeling of being devalued and disrespected by the medical providers was a constant theme. The young Florida mother-to-be whose breathing problems were blamed on obesity when in fact her lungs were filling with fluid and her heart was failing. The Arizona mother whose anesthesiologist assumed she smoked marijuana because of the way she did her hair. Wow. The Chicago area businesswoman with a high-risk pregnancy who was upset? Who was so upset at her doctor's attitude that she changed GB, changed OBGYNs in her seventh month, only to suffer a fatal postpartum stroke? Over and over, black women told of medical providers who equated being African American with being poor, uneducated, non-compliant, and unworthy. Sometimes you just know in your bones when someone feels contempt for you based on your race, said one Brooklyn woman who took to bring in her white husband or in-laws to every prenatal visit. So this Brooklyn woman had to bring her white husband or in-laws to every prenatal visit. So you might want to rent a white person. Black women, you might have to rent a white man or a white female <laughs> to get a, to get a, a adequate care. That's kind of funny. It reminds me of a skit I saw with uh, Chris Rock. This tracks with Serena Williams' story about her pregnancy, leaving some observers to note that black women can't escape skepticism, even when the topics and questions are their own bodies. A growing number of black doulas and midwives have stepped in to fill the gap left, inadequ left by inadequate medical care, but activists argue that hospitals and doctors must work harder to protect black mothers. All right. So guys, thank you for listening. Um, go to the comment section. I'm going to start, um, listing in this video, um, check the box, um, charities that we can do. I'm actually working on, you know, getting in contact with judge hatchet. She lost her daughter too. And I want to tell judge hatchet that, you know, you have the star power, you are well known and definitely we need legislation. We don't need we're we're beyond the part of raising awareness. We're beyond the part of getting doctors on board. You can't have an American society, number one G1, number one G7 country in the world operating like this. We're far beyond 
raising awareness. We're far beyond feminism. We're talking about murder. This is murder. This is systematic murder. Let's, let's just be honest. And, you know, people are scratching their heads. There's no explanation why if I take a train four stops down and four stops away, there's a disparity that's 243%. So this is systematic murder. And if you're watching this video, show it to your daughter. It's not just pregnancy. It's not just pregnancy. Black women are being kept out of the loop for diet, nutrition. We're being kept out of the loop for, you know, our, just any type of diagnosis. And it, it starts from your youth. There's so many black women who have so much health problems and we're not getting the adequate care. So I think it's time for law. I think it's time for our government to impose a black women federation health care system from the government that mandates checks, controls, public and private hospitals because of the alarming numbers of death. And I think that's the only way to fix this remedy as soon as possible, because we can't sustain these types of numbers. We can't sustain these types of deaths. We can't have black women dying left and right. It's just not okay. And if it gets to the point where black women have to have their children out of the country, then so be it. But we need to make sure that we are on that political platform. We're not just complaining. We're donating. We're talking about it. We're contacting our, our senators, our our, our Republicans, our Democrats, we're contacting the whole world and we are going to hold them accountable with our vote. So, you know, definitely we're past, oh, raise awareness. This is systematic murder. And I, that's the way I see it. It's just unacceptable. And, um, you know, I'm as you can see, I'm passionate about it. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. But please share this video and already like and subscribe. Have a great night, guys. Bye bye.